Overclocking is the means of increasing the frequency or otherwise known as the clock speed of a certain chip on your computer. But should you do it and is it worth it? Well, stay tuned to find out. Like anything, it can always come with some form of risk or some sort of catch. Well, with overclocking, there isn't really what I would consider a catch, but there are some slight risks that you need to consider. When you overclock, your CPU will run at a higher temperature as you are increasing the voltage, and as we all know, electronic devices with a higher voltage will produce more wasted heat energy. That extra heat can also reduce the lifespan of your components but do not let that deter you because I have been overclocking for many years now and I have not once seen any chips die on me while overclocking. But is overclocking for you and should you do it? Well let's explore that shall we? I'm going to recommend what you should have for overclocking. This is, uh, this is my personal opinion and can vary between person to person but I recommend for overclocking that you have a CPU and motherboard that allows overclocking. For example, with Skylake CPUs, I would recommend you have an unlocked CPU with a C170 motherboard, as those are designed for overclocking, opposed to a non-K or non-Z170 chipset. But in some cases, you can overclock without needing an unlocked chip or a Z170 motherboard. For example, do you remember the news about non-K Skylake CPUs being able to be overclocked as motherboard manufacturers we're releasing a BIOS update where you could actually increase the bus speed to increase your clock speed. I would only recommend increasing the bus speed to overclock if you have a Skylake CPU because in older generations the bus speed affects like the PCI bus or the SATA bus and if you don't have Skylake do not I wouldn't touch the bus speed if I was you but you're more than happy to try it out but that's just my personal opinion and you are free to try out for yourself. Another thing you've got to consider when overclocking is your power supply. This isn't usually a big issue because most people have power supplies that will enable them to overclock. And um, when I mean enable them to overclock, enough headroom in terms of the voltage and the efficiency of the power supply can affect it somewhat. But do bear that in mind, do your research before you're buying a power supply if you plan on overclocking, just so you're making sure you're getting the best performance you possibly can out of your components. Another thing to consider as well is your cooler. Obviously, overclocking produces a high temperature, so you're probably going to want a better cooler to dissipate that heat. For example, you're not going to want to overclock to 4.5 GHz on a stock cooler. You could probably get away with it with a good like Noctua air cooler or or a good water cooler. For example, I have a Corsair H60 all-in-one liquid CPU cooler. I have an Intel Core i7 and I've overclocked that to 4.5 gigahertz and my temperatures do not go above 70 degrees. Obviously, the temperatures that you want may vary compared to mine. I'm happy with 70, but you may be happy with 80, but you may also be happy with your highest being 60 degrees or 50. It depends on what your preference is. But if you can overclock and know how to do it, you definitely should because it is very easy to do. So easy, even an idiot can do it. As there are many options to overclock your CPU, many more methods. For example, you could do it in your BIOS. And in your BIOS, you could do it two ways, depending on what motherboard you have. You can do it like me, I do it the good old fashioned way. I, I play around with my voltages, I play around with my clock speeds and CPU ratios and all that to get the best performance. Other options in the BIOS, for example, is OC Genie by MSI, where basically all you have to do is hit a button on your motherboard or in the BIOS and it will automatically overclock you to around 4 GHz or 4.2 GHz or even higher depending on what motherboard software you have. Another really cool option you can do is actually overclock your CPU within Windows. Applications like Intel Extreme Tuning Utility will actually stress out your CPU, go through a lot of tests, find the perfect clock speed for your CPU and will actually set those settings in place. So you actually don't have to do absolutely anything at all, you just have to 
run the software and then you can just put your feet up and you're good to go. But you should definitely ex consider overclocking because it's extra free performance. You brought those chips, why the hell not? You have that CPU already, it can do so much more. Why not squeeze a bit of extra performance out of it? That could be the difference between like 50 or 60 frames, depending on what your use case scenario really is. But one thing to consider when overclocking your CPU is that you may not get the same results as someone else overclocking the exact same processor. This is due to your motherboard or the CPU lottery. Basically, your motherboard can affect how well you overclock because there are something called VRMs and the MOSFETs on the motherboard which all contribute to how well you can overclock your processor and also the CPU lottery. CPUs aren't all exactly the same but yeah of course in terms of performance they are the same in terms of like the die and all that they just about are the same but you can get some variation that will limit how far you can overclock your processor. For example an Intel Core i5 4790K may only overclock to 4.2 GHz, whereas another one may overclock to 4.5 GHz. You're never going to know when you buy CPU, and that is why we call it the CPU lottery. But in conclusion, you definitely should try and overclock your CPU. Experiment around a little, have a bit of fun, and you should definitely do it because Trix performance is always a win win. Anyway, guys, I'm Matt from MLC Tech. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you Enjoy this video, video, make sure to give it a like if you dislike it for some reason, well, I am sorry. But if you want to see more content like this in the future, please make sure to subscribe, it helps me a lot. And anyway guys, I'll see you in the next one.